Welcome to our tech discussion. Today, we're tackling a fascinating question that many teams encounter when adopting a microservice architecture. Our viewer is exploring the integration of GraphQL as a single API endpoint for their new project. The viewer's team is divided on how to communicate between GraphQL and their microservices. Some advocate for using REST, while others suggest implementing a GraphQL endpoint for each service. They're curious about the advantages and disadvantages of both approaches. They express concerns about redundancy if they use GraphQL for every service, fearing it might lead to schema duplication. At the same time, they worry that relying on REST could undermine the benefits of GraphQL. With limited experience in GraphQL, they're eager to uncover any overlooked pros and cons. Welcome back to another technical video. Today, we're gonna to be going through a question, going through those answers, and hopefully it leads to your solution. Remember, stay a little bit crazy, just like me, to get through to your resolution. Now let's get started. Let's begin by discussing the two main approaches for communication between GraphQL and microservices, using REST or having a GraphQL endpoint for each service. Using REST endpoints for each microservice can be straightforward. It allows you to leverage existing RESTful practices and tools. However, it may lead to overfetching or underfetching of data, which GraphQL aims to solve. On the other hand, having a GraphQL endpoint for each microservice can provide more flexibility and efficiency. Each service can define its own schema but this may lead to redundancy and increased complexity in managing multiple schemas. It's important to consider your team's experience with GraphQL. If you're new to it, starting with REST might be easier. You can gradually introduce GraphQL as your team becomes more comfortable. Ultimately, the decision should align with your project requirements and team capabilities. Evaluate the trade-offs carefully to find the best fit for your architecture. Let's now look at a user-suggested answer. A company has been using GraphQL for a year, but faced challenges with maintaining schemas across their platform API and microservices. Developers question the need for double work and the benefits of the current setup. Apollo GraphQL introduced schema stitching, which allowed individual microservices to maintain their own GraphQL endpoints. The Node.js platform API stitches these together, creating a seamless experience for client developers. This approach not only simplified the process, but also allowed for the decoupling of certain microservices the team found it to be a significant improvement in their development process. Let's now look at another user-suggested answer. When using GraphQL in a microservice architecture, you have two main options. One is to make all microservices GraphQL, and the other is to use GraphQL as an API gateway while keeping the backend data APIs as REST.
Recent evaluations showed that REST with Express was more efficient than GraphQL with Apollo. This is because GraphQL's query parsing can be more resource intensive compared to simpler JSON parsing in REST. Based on these findings, it's recommended to keep your data APIs RESTful for better performance. And that's it guys. I hope the video has helped find that resolution that you're looking for. And if it did, please hit subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Now, until the next time you need a technical video, I hope you have a good one. Cheers.